On March 23, 1369, the tides of the Middle Ages were stirred by a dramatic event. A fight to the death inside a tent between two half-brothers, one virtuous, the other quite the opposite. This event came as the climax of a string of incidents over years involving kings, queens, mistresses, and political games. It all started with Alfonso XI, the King of Castile. A successful monarch with a personal failing, his heart was divided between his wife and his mistress. This eventually led to a bitter divide in the royal court after his death. His son Pedro, known as the Cruel, became the new king, but found himself embroiled in power struggles with his half-brothers and found himself using deceit, cruelty, and even murder to secure his throne. Yet the most shocking part of this tale is, ah, uh, you'll hear about that soon enough. Hey there, curiosity explorers. Ready for another dive into the unknown? I'm your host, Cesar, and joined by the vivacious commentator, Sonia. We're here to take you on a journey through time and intrigue. Hello, fellow knowledge seekers. As Caesar mentioned, we're about to unearth some of history's most fascinating tales. So gear up, because it's going to be an epic ride. And don't forget, subscribing to Curiosity Wonderland is the best way to join us on these daily adventures. Sharing our episodes helps spread the love of learning, and your comments fuel our curiosity. So let's dive in. Now, let's dive deeper into the life of King Pedro, who was known as the Cruel. He was a man known for his suspicious and vindictive nature, employing deceit and cruelty against those who opposed him. Wow, I can't imagine what it must have been like living under such a king. Why was he so cruel, especially to his own family? Ah, for that, we need to go back to his childhood. Born in 1334, Pedro was sent away from the royal court along with his mother, Queen Maria, after his father, King Alfonso, started preferring his mistress over his wife. This scandal and exile left a mark on both Maria and Pedro, sowing seeds of bitterness within them. I see, so Pedro's upbringing played a significant role in shaping his personality. But how did he handle the politics of the court? Pedro's reign was marked by intrigue and power struggles. The royal court became a hotbed for political scheming as Pedro had to contest with his half-brothers Enrique and Fadricue, who were children of his father's mistress, Leonor. They had amassed quite a bit of wealth and power. Sounds like a classic case of royal family drama, but Pedro must have had some redeeming qualities, right? Pedro was physically attractive, being tall, blonde, blue-eyed, and loved activities like horse riding, hunting, and participating in jousts. However, his personality overshadowed these aspects. His suspicious nature, combined with a long memory, made reconciliation with him a hazardous venture. That's pretty intense. It must have been challenging to navigate such a volatile environment. Absolutely. Imagine living in a realm where any attempt at making peace with the king could potentially lead to your execution. It's a world where one wrong move could cost you everything. Pedro's reign wasn't just marked by internal power struggles, though. He was also known for his ruthless actions towards his father's mistress, Leonor, who was executed in the year of 1351, shortly after Pedro ascended the throne. Talk about holding a grudge. That's a pretty drastic action to take against your own father's mistress. Indeed. But Leonor wasn't the only victim of Pedro's wrath. He was quick to hand out punishments, even to his chief advisors and nobility. If he suspected their loyalty or they failed him somehow, he would send the executioners in an instant. I'm starting to see a pattern here. It seems his paranoia really ruled his actions. That's a valid observation. Even Pedro's romantic life wasn't free from his brutal approach. He met a Castilian noblewoman named Maria de Padilla in 1352 and instantly fell for her. This dark-haired beauty was Pedro's constant companion and had a moderating influence on him. But he was nonetheless arranged to be married to Blanche of Bourbon, as it would strengthen alliances and bring a large dowry. Did he manage to balance these two relationships? Not exactly. Just two days after his wedding with Blanche, Pedro abandoned her to return to Maria. This act created a massive scandal throughout Europe, straining relations with France and the papacy. Eventually, he sought to annul his marriage, imprisoned Blanche, and had her murdered in 1361. 
His personal life really read like a soap opera, doesn't it? But what about his foreign policy? Pedro's foreign policy was as belligerent as his domestic governance. While previous rulers had directed Castile's energies against the Muslims of Granada, Pedro allied himself with Granada and decided to invade the Christian Kingdom of Aragon. This move was simply to establish control over the Iberian Peninsula, despite the high cost it would incur. Pedro's cruel reign took a decidedly darker turn during a dinner with his half-brother Fadrique. In an unsettling display, Pedro ordered his execution at the dinner table and continued his meal while Fadrique lay dying nearby. That's quite gruesome. How did people react to such a brutal act? The event shocked many, and it pushed Enrique, Fadrique's twin, to seek assistance from Perry III of Aragon. They planned to overthrow Pedro and make Enrique the new King of Castile. This ignited a full-scale war that even drew England and France into the fray. It sounds like Pedro made quite a few enemies. He did. Even at the height of his power, Pedro's ruthlessness cost him. After winning a major battle with the help of Edward, the Black Prince of England, Pedro couldn't contain his rage and stabbed a former follower who was among the prisoners. Edward was disgusted by this act, and their alliance crumbled shortly thereafter. So where did that leave Pedro? Pedro's hold on his kingdom weakened. As the English left, many of his subjects turned to Enrique's side. Enrique also garnered support from Bertrand de Gisclin, a powerful French knight and leader of a mercenary group. The stage was set for the final act of Pedro's tumultuous reign. As the year of 1369 unfolded, Pedro's already shaky reign continued to crumble. City after city, castle after castle were falling to Enrique's forces. His situation was growing dire, and in a desperate bid to stay in power, Pedro proposed a risky plan. What was his strategy? Pedro decided to play a dangerous game. He offered Bertrand du Guesclin, the French knight supporting Enrique, a handsome bribe to help him escape. Pedro promised Bertrand lordship over six towns and 200,000 gold doubles if he would aid him. That's a hefty offer. Did Bertrand take it? Bertrand agreed to consider it, but as fate would have it, he betrayed Pedro. Bertrand had informed Enrique about Pedro's offer and Enrique countered saying he would match the bribe if Bertrand lured Pedro out of his castle. So Pedro was walking into a trap. Exactly. On the night of March 23rd, Pedro, believing he was on his way to freedom, instead walked straight into Enrique's hands. This led to a tense confrontation between the two half-brothers who had been at odds for years. Pedro, who had murdered Enrique's twin brother and other family members, now found himself face to face with the man seeking revenge. This dramatic confrontation between Enrique and Pedro ended with a violent struggle and the fate of Castile on the line. The two brothers wrestled on the ground, weapons drawn. Just when Pedro seemed to gain the upper hand, he was pulled off of Enrique, but no one came to Pedro's aid. In the end, Enrique struck the fatal blow to his brother, claiming the throne of Castile for himself. It's a chilling story. It reminds me of a documentary I watched recently about power struggles within royal families. It seems betrayal and rivalry are common themes in these families' histories. It indeed appears so. After Pedro's death, Enrique had his brother's body beheaded and left outside for several days, a harsh reminder of his newfound power. Enrique would rule for ten more years and his reign would eventually lead to the unification of Aragon and Castile into Spain in the 15th century. You know, on a lighter note, this reminds me of a time I lost a game of chess to my brother. Of course, it's a far cry from losing a kingdom, but at that moment, it felt like my world had ended. I can only imagine, but it's a good reminder of how everything is relative. Pedro's story, however, remains a stark example of ambition, betrayal, and the thirst for power taken to its extreme. His reign, marked by violence and cruelty, led him to be remembered as one of the greatest villains of the Middle Ages. As his biographer Clara Esto puts it, Pedro lived a life marked by struggle, with very few moments of pleasure or peace. Pedro's story is indeed a tragic one, with many of his problems stemming from his own actions. Despite his harsh rule, he did have supporters who saw him as the just. However, the majority remember him as Pedro the Cruel, a ruler whose legacy was marked by violence and power struggles. 
It's such a stark reminder of how history is often shaped by the actions of those in power, for better or for worse. Absolutely. For those interested in learning more about Pedro's reign and his tumultuous relationship with his half-brother, Enrique, there are several comprehensive readings available. These include Clara Estau's Pedro the Cruel of Castile, 1350-1369, and Richard Vernier's The Flower of Chivalry, Bertrand du Guesclin and the Hundred Years' War. Those sound like fascinating reads. Pedro's story certainly provides an intriguing look into the power dynamics of the Middle Ages. Without a doubt. As we've seen from this narrative, the past remains a fascinating source of stories filled with power, betrayal, and the human struggle for control. Even though we're centuries removed, these tales continue to resonate and remind us of the complexity of human nature. So there we have it, a tale as old as time, a power struggle between siblings, but with the added dramatic elements of medieval kingship, betrayal, and bloody battles. The cruel reign of Pedro of Castile, the betrayals, the murders, and the power plays, ultimately leading to a desperate struggle for survival and a final fatal showdown with his half-brother Enrique. It's a story that has it all, from political intrigues to personal vengeances. It goes to show that power struggles and betrayals have been a part of our history for ages. And the moral of the story? Perhaps it's that power often comes at a high price. In this case, a price paid in blood and betrayal. A powerful lesson, indeed. Thank you all for joining us for this epic tale from the annals of history. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to blast that like button, leave a comment, and share this podcast with your friends. We really appreciate your support and love hearing your thoughts. Until next time, stay curious. And always remember to look back into history. It's more dramatic than any fiction. Goodbye for now. I found this fascinating story on the Medievalists.net site in an article titled The Most Dramatic Moment of the Middle Ages, written by Medievalists.net and published on March 3rd, 2024. For those of you interested in exploring this further, you can find the link in the description. Until next time.